I declare that you will experience the goodness of the Lord every moment of every day. When we talk about Christ, we're talking about the anointed one, the one who rose from the dead. I always say there is a difference between Jesus Christ and Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. There is a difference. Something will give way this coming week. Don't miss this coming week. Healing power comes from the blood and it never fails. Saving power comes from the blood. It flows eternally. Healing power comes from the blood. Christianity that the Messiah died for our sins fulfilling what the prophet spoke about what David spoke about in the Psalms what Moses spoke about fulfilling that he was buried in a tomb and on the third day God raised Jesus from the dead because he lives we can face today and tomorrow because he lives you shall live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ you shall live and be strong because he is alive Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 the New Living Translation it says I also pray this is the Apostle Paul I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. Hallelujah. And then the, the, the amplified version, it says the immeasurable. I pray that you may understand the immeasurable and unlimited and unsurpassing greatness of his power in and for us. In and for us. In and for us. The power works in the inside of us. The power works also outwardly changing situations. It works in the inside of us, strengthening us while it works in the outside. Hallelujah. You must understand this power. You must understand this power. This is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He's talking about resurrection power. Do you know that resurrection power dwell in the inside of you? Do you know that resurrection power 
power. It's working in your life on a daily basis. Opening doors for you. Fighting your battles. That is why the Bible says you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand still and, sal and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the deliverance of our God. Stand still and see the prosperity of God. Stand still and see the protection of God. Hallelujah. I declare that this perilous pestilence, this contagious pestilence, it will not touch you. It will not touch your family. It is well with you. I bless you this morning. I declare that God has crowned your year with his goodness in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will experience the goodness of the Lord every moment of every day. Come and shout unto the Lord at home. Shout unto the Lord and declare I will experience his goodness 2021. I will experience the favor of the Lord 2021. I walk in power. The power of God is at work in my life. Declare that resurrection power is working for my family. Resurrection power is working in my career. Resurrection power is working in my business. Resurrection power is working in my finances. Resurrection power is affecting my body in the name of Jesus. Begin to declare resurrection power over your parents. Resurrection power over your marriage. Resurrection power over your children. Resurrection power over your grandparents. In the name of Jesus, come on, shout unto the Lord. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. If Christ is not risen, I believe that Christ is risen. I believe that he is my king because I fellowship with him. I know him. Do you know him this morning? Do you know him this morning? Know him this morning. He's alive. He's alive. He's powerful. He wants to change your situation right now. All he's looking for is that you open your heart. He's making a divine invitation. He says, come unto me. Come unto me. Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me. All you who labor in a heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. He says, I will give you rest. Is there anyone among you thirsty? John 7, 37. Is there anyone among you thirsty? Let him come to me and drink. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. In John chapter 4, he told the woman at the well, he said, woman, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and you knew who it is who is talking to you, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. He says, if you drink this water, anyone who drinks this water, they will thirst again. But the water that I shall give you, shall be to you a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. I declare the fountain of water is springing up into everlasting life in your life right now. Warding every sickness, warding every disease off in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you reign with Christ in this life hallelujah you reign with Jesus in this life you reign with Jesus hallelujah we reign with Jesus the Bible says this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and sit at him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly places far above principalities far above powers far above the rulers of the darkness hallelujah not only in this age but in the age which is to come the Bible says God has highly exalted him. When did he exalt him? When he raised him up from the dead. God highly exalted his son Jesus and given him a name that is above any other name. At the name of Jesus. Coronavirus bow. At the name of Jesus. Poverty bow. At the name of Jesus. Addictions bow. At the name of Jesus. Fear lives in the name of Jesus Christ. He has highly exalted Jesus. Anything that is a name you must know. It bow to the king. It bowed to the king. That is why Matthew 633 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. It says, Don't worry about them. When you find the kingdom, you find resurrection power. When you find the kingdom, he gives you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you allow on earth is allowed in heaven. Whatever you don't allow on earth is not allowed in heaven. Reign as king. Hallelujah. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one much more much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness they shall reign in this life by jesus christ they shall reign in this life by jesus christ i said they shall reign in this life by jesus christ the bible in the book of romans chapter 8 i want to read a verse for you romans chapter 8 verse 10 to 11 the passion translation t p t it says, now Christ lives his life in you. Oh, I love that. How simple is this? This is Christ. When we talk about Christ, we're talking about the anointed one. The one who rose from the dead. I always say there is a difference between 
Jesus Christ and Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. There is a difference. The Bible says that a, a, a seed is sown in dishonor. But when it rises up, it rises up in power. Hallelujah. Jesus of Nazareth could only be in one place at the same time. At the same time. Let me tell you, Jesus of Nazareth, he was powerful. That is why he walked on the water. Jesus Christ does not walk on the water. He leaves the mountain in a fraction is in the boat. Everywhere he is, it's in a moment. He's not limited by time. This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is Jesus Christ. He's the one who enters the room with the doors and windows shut with no limitation. Hallelujah. That Christ lives in you. That Christ lives in you. You must understand the difference between Jesus of Nazareth and the one that resurrected. The one that resurrected, resurrected in power. Flesh and bone. Flesh and bone. We live with this hope on this earth. That one day, one day. That is why if you are not born again, I'm going to make an invitation for you at the end of this service. Let me tell you something. The Bible says there shall come a time where our bodies will take the same form that Jesus Christ's body was when he rose from the dead. Flesh and bone, hallelujah. Flesh and bone, flesh and bone, flesh and bone, flesh and bone. The Bible says we shall not all fall asleep. We shall not all fall asleep. We shall be changed at a twinkle of an eye. This mortality will put on immortality. This corruption will put on incorruption. And death will be swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. The time is coming where all of us will be ushered by the voice that will shout from heaven and say, come up here. We shall be raptured. We will go and be with the Father forever where there is no more lack. There is no more sickness. There is no more dying. There is no more hunger. There is no more pain. It's a place which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord this morning? If you love the Lord, let me tell you something. That, that love, that love empowers you. That love empowers you because the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. It is his love in the inside of us that empowers us to win. And that love inside of us is Jesus. What do you think the Bible is talking about? When the Bible tells us that now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that is at work in the inside of us. What do you think that power is? That is resurrection power, my brother. That is resurrection power, my sister, in the name of Jesus. That is why when you read it in the Amplified, in the Amplified version, Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now unto him who in consequence of his mighty power, that is working in the inside of me. It's able to do. And then it says, super abundantly. I declare super abundance in your life. Hallelujah. Super abundance in your life. It says, far over and above. And it says, and above our wildest prayers, our wildest thoughts, our wildest hopes, our wildest desires in the name of Jesus. I declare that upon you. Don't say God is able. No, don't say that. Don't say God is able. Say God is moving in my life, exerting his power in the inside of me, causing me to experience his power far over, super abundantly, above my highest goals, above my highest desires, above my highest prayers, above my highest thoughts. Hallelujah. Man, the power of God is at work. Believe that he's alive. Believe that he's alive. Don't say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven? Man, when you pray, like it's so far. You're wondering, does God hear me when I pray? It sounds like it just ends on the roof. No. The righteousness of faith does not speak like that. The righteousness of faith knows that I fellowship with him wherever I am. I don't have to necessarily kneel. Although kneeling is part of our humility in worshiping him. But I don't have to do that. I can be working and I fellowship with him. I can be driving and I fellowship with him. I can be in a small room and I fellowship with him. I can be taking a shower, fellowship with him. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and even in your heart. Speak the word. That is why this coming week, man, we're going to speak the word like never before. It's our final week of prayer. We're going to speak the word like never before. Hallelujah. 
two weeks gone the final week we are taking over we are taking off man something will give way this coming week don't miss this coming week don't miss prayer and fasting this coming week in the name of Jesus even you who has not been part of this come on join us join us join us the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times but seven times he rises back again I call you to rise hallelujah and come and join us as we affect the spiritual realm I've been saying since we started prayer that the prayers we are making the declarations that we are making we will encounter them throughout the year encounter them you turn on the right you see the blessing and say oh i declared that during prayer and fasting you turn to the left you see god doing something there you say oh i declared that you turn and see something oh my pastor declared that over my life you shall see it happen. You shall see it happen. Don't struggle 2021. Don't struggle when God is alive. Don't struggle when you have power in your mouth. The righteousness of faith speaks this way. It speaks this way. The word is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. This is the word of faith which we preach. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord a round of praise. Give the Lord a round of praise. Come on. Give the Lord a round of praise. Let me finish. Let me finish. Romans 8. I read verse, I read the first portion. It says, now Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you. His life-giving spirit, underline that, his life-giving spirit, that life-giving spirit was given to you after he resurrected that's resurrection power his life giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God and then in verse 11 he says yes say yes come on say yes he says yes God raised Jesus to life hallelujah this is my message God raised Jesus to life for you and since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you he will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. I declare that the spirit of God breathes life to you right now. If you are feeling sick in your body, I declare the spirit of Christ breathes life to you in the name of Jesus. If you are feeling weak, if you are feeling stressed, you are feeling anxious, I declare the spirit of Christ breathes life to you in the name of Jesus. Let me read verse 11 Romans 8 verse 11 from the message translation listen to this you're gonna love this it says when God lives and breathes in you and, and then it says in brackets and it does as surely as it did in Jesus ah, amen the Bible is so nice why are you not reading the Bible Mara the Bible is so nice the Bible is so nice man I get so much encouraged I read some scriptures in my office at home and I run around for joy of what these things are saying come and celebrate these things come and celebrate these things celebrate these things hallelujah he says when God lives and breathes in you and he does as surely as he did in Jesus. Look at that. It does not say as surely as he did in Christ. He's showing. He says as surely as he did in Jesus. Meaning the Jesus who died. When he rose again. God bore resurrection power upon him. He exerted resurrection power upon him. Hallelujah. He says you are delivered from that dead life. Because of the resurrection power. He says, with his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's body. <sighs> with his spirit, his spirit, his life-giving spirit, that is resurrection power. He says, with his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's body. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 6, 17 says, but, if, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Say, I'm one spirit with the Lord. I'm one spirit with the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I like what the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2.20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, 
but Christ lives in me. Come on, say that about yourself and say Christ lives in me. Come on, say it now. Say Christ lives in me. I want to hear you say it. Say Christ lives in me. You are not saying it. Say it like you made it. And Christ lives in me. This is the mystery of Christianity. This is what gives a Christian power that Christ lives in you. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. He says, me have died. Christ is now alive in the inside of me. And then he says this, the, the new king, the, the King James Version, he says, the life which I now live in the flesh. He says, I live by the faith. He says, it's no longer my faith, but it is by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Hallelujah. Come on at home. Stand up and begin to declare resurrection power. Declare resurrection power upon your life. Declare resurrection power. It is at work in your life, changing your situation. Resurrection power. It is at work in your family, changing your family situation. Resurrection power. It is at work in your womb, taking away barrenness resurrection power it is at work in your business causing it to bear fruit resurrection power it is at work right now in the name of Jesus resurrection power it is at work in your marriage causing everything to be aligned to God's will and God's purpose resurrection power it is at work in the lives of your parents protecting them from sickness and disease resurrection power it's at work I declare resurrection power over you in the name of Jesus, I declare resurrection power over you. In the name of Jesus, I refuse it. Your situation can never be the same. If someone in your family has died and it's about to be buried, I speak resurrection power. I speak resurrection power in the name of Jesus. If a dream, a dream has died, I speak resurrection power in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if there is no peace in your family, I speak resurrection power in the name of Jesus. If you are in hospital right now watching this broadcast, may resurrection power hit you. May resurrection power hit you. May resurrection power hit you in the name of Jesus Christ. If Christ is not risen, our preaching is empty. If Christ is not risen, our faith is void. If Christ is not risen, we are most miserable on this earth. I've got news for you. Christ has risen from the dead. Christ has risen from the dead. He presented himself to his disciples alive. He last presented himself to the Apostle Paul who gave us this message. The Apostle Paul has given us this message and we experience resurrection power every day of our lives. If you want that resurrection power in your life, you have to give your life to Christ. You have to give your life to Christ. The Bible says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Man, every one of us, before we got saved, we come from the lineage of Adam. We were born dead, separated from God. When we reach the age of maturity, we have to make a choice to accept Christ. When we accept Christ, we accept his resurrection life. That is why the Bible says that when you want to get born again, you must confess with, the, with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus. You confess that Jesus is your Lord. That is why we call it giving our lives to him. The second thing, you must believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. When you do that, you confess him as your Lord. You believe that God raised him from the dead and you ask him to come into your heart. He will fill you with resurrection power. I tell you, things are going to begin to wake up. I get a lot of people calling me with different kinds of problems. And I tell them, you think you need a husband. You don't need a husband. You need the Holy Ghost. You think you need a job. You don't need a job. You need the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, job will come looking for you. That is why the Bible says, all these things shall be added. You don't have to search for worthless things. You search for that which matters. That is the Holy Ghost. I want to pray with you. Receive Jesus today. Make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. Today, I give you my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Oh, my brother, be filled with the Spirit of God. My sister, be filled with the Spirit of God. You are born again. We will see you in heaven. Hallelujah. Catch us on One Gospel Channel 331 on Sunday at 12 o'clock. And every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And you will be blessed.